Okay, today we are doing an Ashtanga inspired yoga practice. It means it's kind of Ashtanga, kind of not so much. So it's not the exact series, but it just comes from what I would recommend. And I, I just want to shout this book out. This is one of my favorites, Ashtanga Yoga by David Swenson. It's a great little practice manual and gives you some shortened versions and longer versions and runs you through the series of Ashtanga practice. So just a little shout out there and we'll get started. So we're going to start standing as we would in a Ashtanga primary series style to get through our standing poses. First, sun salutations, standing poses, seated poses, awesome. So we start standing just to find ourselves. So stand with your feet either hip distance or closer together, whatever works best for you. Take your hands to your heart, connected hands. Often in this, in this practice, our fingertips are usually drawn together as like blade hands with a connection between the fingertips. So palms press actively, thumbs to heart center. Stand up a little taller and start that breath in and out through the nose with more awareness. We put a slight constriction in the back of the throat to create heat and presence and breath, body, mind. Soften the shoulders, root down through the toes. And there will always be some kind of external distractions in our world, even if they're subtle or they might be a little bigger. And it is our practice to bring our, uh, to train our mind, our awareness to turn inward to be okay with the fluctuations of the outside world and the inside world. So take a couple more breaths, soaking in this atmosphere, this place, doing our best as a practice to turn inward today. We'll start with sun salutation A. Take those hands down next to your sides, palms forward. As you inhale, reach up. Connect the hands, look up. Exhale, open the arms, diving down, hinging at the hips. First one, got a little bit more bend in the knees. Lengthen through the back, place the hands on the shins or fingertips to the floor, flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to plank pose. And right away, we'll lower into chaturanga. So from plank, we keep exhaling, bending the elbows, knees can be down or up. Press into the fingertips and hands, straighten the arms up, dog. Shoulders back, maybe the knees lifted, maybe not yet. Look down, lift the hips, downward facing dog. That was the first sun salutation. I talked a little bit more through the first one and then we'll uh, do less chatting. But we stay in our down dog for five breaths. Press down through the fingertips, heels down, shake out the head. Continue that deep inhale, exhale through the nose, feeling that belly, the lower lungs rise and fall. And one more deep breath. Bend the knees, step or hop forward to the top of the mat. On that inhale, we come to half lift again. Exhale, forward fold. Rising tall, open the arms, reach out, lift up. It should be straight legs, but sometimes that first one, you gotta bend the knees a little. Hands down to your heart or to your side for samasthiti, standing at attention. Okay, let's do it again. Hands down, inhale, reach out and up, connect those hands. Exhale, swan dive into your forward fold. Half lift, inhale, flat back. Exhale. Plank to chaturanga, step or hop back. Bend the elbows, shifting forward with the body, gazes at the top of the mat. Upward dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Core strength draws those hips back. Five breaths. One. Two. Three, four, five. 
five, bend the knees, step or hop forward, half lift, exhale, forward fold. Rising up, open those arms, reach up, exhale, let it go. Standing tall, hold. Inhale, reach up, third sun salutation A. We'll just do three today. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five deep breaths. One of these days I will count in Sanskrit, but I've got to refresh my Sanskrit counts before I do that. One, so for now it's English. Two. Three. Four. Five, jump forward or step forward, half lift, exhale forward fold, inhale arms reach out, rise up, exhale hands down, mountain pose, sun salutation B, we'll do three of these too, bend the knees, sit back, chair pose, utkatasana, exhale, hands come down, the center of the body as you fold forward, half lift, inhale, Exhale, chaturanga, or that tricep push-up. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, down dog. Take an extra breath right here. You might even lift that right leg, inhale. Exhale, step the foot between the hands. Back heel spins down, warrior one. One breath to rise, connect the hands at the top. Hug the lower belly in, feel the stretch on the back of the, the front of the back leg. Back to the floor, exhale, chaturanga, step back. Try to go light, no sound when you drag that foot back. Up dog, inhale, and down dog, exhale. Other side, lift the left leg if you would like, otherwise press the heels down. Step between the hands, low lunge, back heel down. Rise, warrior one. Exhale to the ground. Step back, back heel lifts, left foot steps back, shift to lower. Inhale, lift the heart up dog. Downward facing dog, exhale. Take those five nice breaths. One. Two, really press down through the heels like you're trying to lift your toes off the ground. Three. Tuck your chin, look back or look towards your knees or belly. Four. And five. Jump forward or step forward. Half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, sit back. Reach the hands up, connect them. And then mountain pose, let it go. Two more, let's do it. Bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Up dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale right away. Let's step the right foot forward, continue that exhale. Back heel down, warrior one, hands reach up. Connect and then release, exhale, step back. Plank pose. It's a little bit fast. You can always go at your own pace a little slower. Take some extra breaths if you'd like. We'll meet in down dog eventually. Step the left foot forward from down dog. Inhale, reach up. Warrior one. Hands to the ground. Chaturanga. Up dog. Inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Five breaths. One, <coughs> two, three, four, 
four. Five, step or hop forward, half lift, forward fold, chair pose, inhale, connect those hands at the top, exhale, mountain pose, release, one more sun salutation B, bend the knees, open those arms, reach out and up, connect the hands, exhale, forward fold, half lift, inhale, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, or Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. We're talking Sanskrit. Step the right foot forward. Virabhadrasana, one, reach up, warrior one. Hands to the ground, exhale. Chaturanga, lower down in that high to low plank. Up dog, inhale. Downward Facing Dog, exhale. Step the left foot forward. Rise up, inhale. Hands back to the ground, exhale, step back, chaturanga, up dog, downward facing dog. Last um, five breath count for down dog. So we get used to counting to five in this practice, at least for our active poses. There's two. Three, four, five. Step or hop forward, half lift, exhale, fold deeper, bend the knees, chair pose, reach up, and let it go. There we go, now we move on. So jump or step the feet, oh, hip distance apart. Hands on the hips, roll the shoulders back, look up, inhale. Grab your big toes with your peace sign fingers, exhale, forward fold, straighten the legs. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, pull down by bending the elbows and sliding your forehead towards the floor. Nose, try to get in between the knees. It's Padangustasana, so we're pulling down. Also trying to separate those heels or feet a little bit, and you feel the outer edges of the legs come alive. We're lifting halfway, inhale. Let's release it from there, take the hands on the hips, exhale. Rise up, inhale, jump or hop or step the feet together. Now moving on to some standing poses by simply stepping back. So the right leg steps back, open the arms like making a star. Turn to the back side of your mat, pivot the feet, reach long with that right hand, slide it down the leg for triangle pose. Now you might find the hand on the shin, the floor, or your, big, or your two fingers pulling up on the big toe. The left hand reaches straight up, fingers connected. And we've got this long extension from the tailbone through the crown of the head. No curve in the spine, just a long line. Look up. Unless it bothers your neck, then we're looking down, but try to look up. Oh. And these poses, even though we're on two feet, are balance poses. You may find a little stumbling, a little falling, specifically if you're on carpet. Rise up as you inhale, switch sides. Pivot the feet, left toes face the front, right toes face a well, little bit of a 45 degree angle or so. Reach long, slide that hand down. You might pull up on the toes or hand on the leg or floor. Press the upper body back so they're in line. It's in line with the legs. Reach up. And then rise up, take that inhale, maybe bend in that front knee, pivot to the back, hands on the hips to start with. So we're gonna adjust so that the feet are a little bit wider, left hand reaches forward, we twist. Left hand goes to the outside of the right foot. Now if it's, that's a bit much, you can take it to the inside, but try the outside. 
Press into the hand or fingertips, stack the shoulders right above left and reach up with that right hand. Revolve triangle. Straight legs, powerful legs, still a balanced posture. Good and switch sides, rise up, a little windmill-like effect with the arms, a water wheel effect. Pivot in the feet, adjust here to reach that right hand long to the front, lengthen through the back, and then take the right hand to the outside of the left foot. Left arm starts to reach up. If it bothers your shoulder, take the hand on the hip, no big deal, or to a place that feels appropriate. <laughs> We don't want pain here, so anytime something is sharp and shooting, we come out. We want to be able to breathe solidly and fluidly through each of these poses, creating a meditation, a moving meditation. Okay, rising back up, lift up. Come to that star-like shape, open, and then step forward. Take a breath, hands at your heart. <sighs> Let it go. Hands come down, step that right foot back again. Turn to the back of the mat, right toes face the back. Maybe wider with the legs, bend the right knee. Reach long to the front with that right hand. Well, it's actually to the back. Right hand reaches. Place it to the outside of the foot. Left arm up or overhead, palm facing down. Side angle, look up towards that left palm. Keep rolling that left shoulder back to open up the front of the body and press actively that right knee towards the right elbow or shoulder. Switching sides, top hand comes down and around. It's good for the shoulder, rise up. Switch, pivot to the front of your mat. Bend the left knee, extend and reach along with that left hand. Place it to the outside of the foot. Right arm comes overhead, palm down, bend deeper. So instead of this hip bumping up, let's bring it down by bending deeper into the knee, extending longer. If that's tough on the flexibility portion of the leg, you can come up onto the elbow. That works. We're rising up, hands come down, around, lift up. Switching back to the back of the mat, pivot, but take the left knee to the ground. Doing this kneeling lunge. Left elbow hooks over the right leg for a twist. Stack the right hand over the left for a prayer position, or you get to choose from here the different variations or depths you would like to take. So you can take the back knee and lift it. You can snuggle in a little closer and even open the arms out to the side. So finding a lunge twist. This is supposed to be a revolved side angle but most of us are good without having to take that back heel down and do the super deep twist. So we'll keep it here today or in a place that suits you. Okay, rise up, switch sides, lift up. Other side, I'll have to take that knee down first, which is helpful to set up. Right elbow comes across, palms press, Lift the back knee as an option, or maybe open the hands if you choose your place here. Okay, rising back up, lift up, <laughs> and step forward to the top of the mat. Hands come to your heart. 
nice deep breath in and out. We'll step it wide and stay here for a moment. I've just got to turn the heat down. I'm in this room. I turned it up, but whew, long sleeves, <laughs> not necessarily the way to go with this practice. It's a big heat builder. So let's take the feet wide, parallel legs, open the arms. Take a deep breath in, hands to your hips. Roll the shoulders back, chest lifted, look up, inhale. And then place the hands down on the floor underneath the shoulders. Again, lengthen to that half lift, flat back, look forward. Exhale, bend the elbows, keeping the hands under the elbows. Forehead might, may or may not come to the floor, but is headed that direction. All right, lifting halfway up, inhale. Little bend in the knees as you place your hands on your hips, exhale. Rise up, inhale. Hold and exhale. Reach long, inhale. Exhale, hands back to the waist or the hips. Roll the shoulders back, inhale, look up. Keep the hands where they are, shoulders squeezing. Exhale, forward fold. And stay down. Chest lifted, you won't get as down as far because you have less rounding ability in the back as your shoulders squeeze, elbows back behind you. All right, rise up, lift. Hold, exhale, reach long, inhale. Interlace the hands behind the back, palms press, squeeze them together, inhale, look up. Keep the hands connected, exhale, forward fold. Third variation, we've got four of them total. Right, rising up, inhale, hands in the hips, exhale, no arm expansion, inhale, look up, exhale, grab your big toes with your two fingers, exhale, lower down, inhale, half lift, exhale, forward fold into the last version of our wide leg forward fold, Prasrita Padottanasana. Bend those elbows to help pull you down. Keep your thumbs up so they're not pressing into the floor. Okay, lift up halfway, inhale. Exhale, <sighs> release. Bend in the knees, hands on the hips, rise up, inhale. Step to the top of your mat, exhale. And then we'll do our pyramid pose. So we step back with the right leg. Not as far though. So maybe half the distance or a little bit less than that full length. Pivot all the way to the back. Hands go behind the back. You can go reverse prayer or just hold onto the wrists. Straight legs. Mostly pointed to the back of the mat, the back toes and the front toes. Shoulders back, take a deep breath in. And then hinge forward over that right leg. Now you may find yourself maybe parallel to the floor, perhaps a little lower. Wherever you are, keep the shoulders and elbows pressing back as to not round the shoulders forward. Okay. 
Rising up, inhale, we switch sides. Pivot to the front of your mat, left toes to the front, right toes mostly to the front, heel down. Deep breath in. And forward. Extension and fold slightly. This should be very active in not just the lower body with the legs supporting you, but that upper body. Extending the crown of the head forward, elbows and shoulders back. Okay, rising back up, lift up. If your hands were in reverse prayer, you'll need a little shake out of the hand, so shake them out. I was knocking my fists together instead. Oh God. Weak wrists. Just getting a little dizzy here. Give me a pause. Woo. Okay, stepping to the top of the mat. Always take an extra breath if you need it, okay? Wow. <sighs> What's next? Balance poses. Okay, we're going to stay upright for these ones. So we're going to stand up. I'm going to face you just because it's a little bit easier here. Ground down through the left foot. Left foot. Right knee can come up, or you grab the big toe with your right fingertips and extend the foot to the front. Now, I look, might look different from you because I'm not mirroring you, but that's all right. So your right leg's extended, left hand on the hip, lift tall. Press down through the big toe and engage the core, the abs. And then we pull the leg up, try to fold forward, leaning over that right leg. So if you don't quite get this fold here, that's okay. Nose doesn't have to touch the shin, but it might get there eventually. I don't know. If not, not the end of the world. <laughs> okay, release that just to that lift, lengthen, extend through the heel and take that right leg out to the side. It might be holding onto the knee, might be holding onto the toe. The gaze then goes over the shoulder of your left hand, left shoulder, to find your drishti or focal point just past the tip of the nose out beyond your left shoulder. Get then back to the center. Take that leg forward. One more time as you exhale, pull down, leg up, nose to the knee or shin. Rise back up, hold it. Release the toe, hands on your hips, point the toe. So it looks like this, leg lifted. No leaning back to get a high. It's supposed to be five breaths, but we'll just do another three, two, one, lower down. Whew. Give it a little shake out real quick. So I'm doing the, the balance poses today. So we'll do the other side. Ground down to the right foot. Got it? Left piece and fingers grab the big toe or hug the knee in and hold here. Toe extension as an option. Take that deep breath, exhale, lean forward. Maybe touch nose, shin, forehead to the, to the leg. I don't know. <laughs> Do your best. If we find ourselves tumbling, fumbling, it happens. Good, lengthen and lift. Extend the foot, right hand, active on the right hip, left leg out to the side. It's not a hip lift here. It's not a split. It's directly out to the side and look over the right shoulder. It's been a while since I've done these poses and in a class too. It's not anyone's favorite, but it's good for you. <laughs> Little challenge here. Back to the center. Press, inhale, exhale one more time, nose to knee. Lift and inhale, release the toe, hands to your hips, extend the leg, lift. And lower down, <laughs> let it go. And I actually can't recall if I, I flip flop these two balance poses, but that's all right. 
we're doing one or the other. So now we get into the hips and external rotation. So left leg is grounded again. Right ankle, ankle can come over to figure four or lift it up into the crease of your hip as the knee folds down for half lotus standing. Right arm comes around. You might find the big toe or the arm. So staying here, cool. We also have the folded option. So maybe partially down to the shin, the left hand might find the floor. Straighten the left leg. If you're in a simple figure four, a little bend in the knee can help actually to get into that hip of that right leg. But with the fold, we try to straighten into a forward fold completely. You should be able to breathe wherever you're at and pause at any time that you're transitioning. We come back up slowly. Slowly. And release that. Oh, shake it out a little bit. Other side. Right leg shoots down. Ankle over that right knee. And so you might stay right here, reach forward, like hold it, cool. Or we've got the half lotus variation with straight leg, straight right leg, bent left knee. Trying to get that knee to point down and fold down. It can be quite intense. So again, check in with your breath. <sighs> Ease into it. Left hand comes around, it might find the arm or the big toe for the bind. If we are folding, you'll take your journey down as you exhale. Heel is kind of digs into the belly. It's actually good for digestion. And rising back up. Good to release it. Little shake out. Good job, let's step back to the top of the mat. Deep breath in, slow exhale, palms forward. Inhale, reach up, exhale, forward fold. Going through that sun salutation as a transition. Half lift, inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Step or hop forward. Right away, bend the knee and sit back, chair pose, reach up. Palms connect, unless your shoulders are bugging you, you can open the arms. Look up towards the thumbs, Utkatasana. Three more breaths. On your last exhale, hands come down, straighten the legs. Lift the heels, open the knees, hands plant down, shoulder distance, look forward. Knees will go on the backs of the arms or into the armpits, snuggle them in. It's just a transition. Lifting the feet as an option, step or hop back. As you exhale, chaturanga. Up dog, inhale. Down and facing dog, exhale. Step the right foot forward. Warrior one, back heel spins down. Rise up, connect the hands and pause. Look up, bend deep into that right knee. Switching sides, we pivot by continuing to look up, straighten the front leg, pivot to the back side of the room, bend the left knee. Keep looking up, ground down through the back foot. Take the hands down to your heart. Well, I'm gonna, you're gonna see the back of me, that's okay. Open the arms, open the arms. Back foot might heel toe a little farther for warrior two. Shoulders soft, gaze towards the left fingertips. If 
bend a little deeper. Keep the arms as they are. Let's switch sides, straighten the left leg, pivot to the front of the mat, bending into the right knee. Warrior two. There's two breaths. Three, keep that left arm lifted. Four. Five, and a couple ways to transition. We can cartwheel the hands down, step to down dog, or bring the hands down just in front of the right toes, lift the back leg, add a handstand. Maybe, maybe just one little hop up, and we're back down. It's a great time to practice a few handstands, or come to plank, chaturanga, up dog, down and facing dog. Standing poses, we did the, ent the entire standing series, it is complete. <laughs> So let's step or jump through the hands to a seated pose. And this series is typically 90 minutes, but we do an hour. So we do miss out on a few things. I'll cut a few short. Um, instead of five sun salutations, we did three of each. So now we extend the legs forward. Straight leg, let's hit up staff pose or dandasana. So rolling the inner thighs together, create more space in the back. Palms press down, shoulders back, press through the heels. <sighs> nice L-like shape. Tuck the chin slightly, and even though it feels or it looks like you're not doing much, there's a lot of activity going on here. Legs are shaking a little. And then reach those arms up. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Grab onto your big toes. We'll do a few variations of this forward fold. Lift up and lengthen halfway. And then grabbing onto those big toes, bend the elbows, pull yourself forward. Take a half lift, inhale. Slide the hands over the tops of the feet as you exhale. Bring it down. Another half lift, inhale. Now slide the hands around the sides of the feet, either grabbing the feet or grabbing onto a wrist as you pull down, hands along the sides. And reach the crown of the head forward, belly to the thighs, chest to the shins, nose to the toes. Okay, rise back up. We'll do this one right away rather than adding a vinyasa in between. Hands to the ground, point the toes, hands behind you, fingers towards the toes. Lift the hips, reverse plank. Five breaths. Look up or slightly back. Try to get the big toes to touch the floor. and lower back down. Good, bend the knees, open the legs out to the side, bound ankle. Okay, grab onto those feet, deep breath in, hug the elbows to your rib cage as you hinge forward. Press the elbows actively onto the thighs. It's gonna get them open a little more and it's, it's a hip opener of sorts. Okay, lift back up. We're gonna try this, all right? Grab onto the big toes. Knees up just a little, lean back. Lean back, lean back. Try it. Extend, lift the legs to a wide leg position where you're grabbing the toes. Find balance and 
this, I make it look easier than it is. It's really not. There's a lot of little stabilizing muscles happening here. Straighten the legs, lift through the heart. And if you're on carpet, this next transition isn't going to be as scary. But if you press through the heels, try this. Press through the heels, you'll land on your calves. Roll forward, roll forward, and come down. <laughs> Ooh, or just get to this position in some way. Let's grab onto those toes and lean forward for a moment. And then lift back up. Cross the ankles. Roll forward, step or jump back. Chaturanga, up dog, downward facing dog. Again, jump through the hands or sit down and swing the legs around. Take the left leg and extend it forward. Just do a twist here. Right foot goes over the top. We'll do that variation today, over the top. Hug the knee in. Right hand down at the base of the back. Left arm reaches up. Exhale as you twist, elbow to the knee or hug the knee, sit up tall and look back over the right shoulder. And back to the center. We're gonna take that right knee, lift it up, and bring it around so the top of the foot's on the ground and we roll the calf away from the thigh, sit down next to your right foot. And it might be enough to sit upright here, extend through the left leg, sit tall, and then walk it forward. Upright might be enough. You may have grabbed the toes, but you'll find yourself falling. So actively press through the right side. And then lift back up and we'll switch it. So the right foot comes forward, nice. Bend the left knee, take it over the top of the right leg. Lift on the inhale, left hand at the base of the back, reach up as you inhale again. <laughs> Elbow to the thigh or hug the knee, twist and look back. Okay, release that twist. Take the left leg up, over, and behind. So lean to the side a little bit to help you get there. And you can't see what I'm doing on this side, but you saw on the other side, right? So it's making that half hero pose in the left side. Foot pointed back, sit up tall, ground down through the left hip, left side, and walk it forward, grabbing the feet or keeping your balance with the hands on both sides of the foot. Okay, we lift up, but don't move anything with the leg. We're gonna try the transition from here. So we lean forward, press into the ground. Lift your hips, press into the left foot. Lift the hips up, slide that right leg back, step back, Oop, missed my mat, chaturanga, up dog, inhale, downward facing dog. Last time we're jumping through, actually, second to last time, jump through, whew, sit through, lift to boat pose. Reach forward. Straighten or bend the legs up to you again. Check in with that breath. We'll do three of these Three holding boat poses Typically if I do the extended or more challenging version it oftentimes Encourages you to try that but definitely go to your abilities today Or find the edge just for today Cross the ankles without picking up or without touching the toes down, try it. You may touch the toes down though, but try it without. Hug it in, hands down, pick up your body, pick up your booty, lift, and back down, boat pose. Here's number two. Good. 
Good, and cross the ankles opposite this time. Bring it in. I'm gonna take my toes down this time. Lift, press, engage one more time. Boat pose. All right, back to plank pose. Cross the ankles, hug it in. Pick yourself up or simply roll forward to step back. Chaturanga and up dog. That feels so good. Downward facing dog. Now is our last time we're jumping through the hands or sitting through. <sighs> Exhale, take it down. Legs forward, reach forward, roll yourself to the floor. <sighs> when you get there, <sighs> relax for a second. Take your feet about hip distance apart. Feet back towards your body, knees bent, palms down towards your feet. Press into the heels and lift your hips. Squeeze the shoulders together, bridge pose. Now if this ever bothers your knees, take your feet a little farther away from your body or make sure you're pressing back into the shoulders and weights pressing from the heels and into your upper body rather than collecting in that knee area. You could interlace the hands behind you, squeeze the shoulders. Good, then releasing this bridge pose, come down, take a moment to rest. We'll do one more back bend, and you can choose to do bridge pose that we just did, or wheel pose, also known as Urdhva Dhanurasana. I'll do that one just to show you. But you're welcome to repeat bridge pose. So we, for wheel pose, we take your hands under the shoulders, elbows towards the sky. You're pressing into your hands and feet at the same time, straightening the legs and arms, or doing your best to do so. Press into the hands, the legs, and lift. Now the challenge here is to not bend those knees so much. You actually want that heart to press through the shoulders. <sighs> nice wheel-like shape. And, not, um, and also equally distributing that bend in the back <sighs> rather than just in one spot. <sighs> or you're in bridge pose, so pick a place. Right, and lower down slowly, <sighs> slowly, and just take a moment to rest. Hug the knees in, rock side to side. The next, send those legs straight up. Straight up and legs up the wall, a place where you can hold and relax. If you're comfortable or would like to go up into shoulder stand rather than this simple hips down position, if you press into the elbows, lift the hips overhead, extend the legs up. Let's see. There we go, extend the legs up, hands to the low back. There's your option, shoulder stand. You're trying to stack the wrists or the heels over the hips, over the shoulders, straight line. If you're in shoulder stand, you can take your feet back to plow pose. Once the toes touch the floor, hands interlace behind the back. Or stay in legs up the wall. And from plow pose, if you're in that position, bend the knees so they're around your ears or that direction. And 
And then releasing this by rolling down wherever you are, roll down or start that descent down. Extend the legs out in front of you. Good. Press into the elbows. So lift the upper body, just the upper body. Elbows and forearms press down. Fish pose, puff out the chest, look back. Now there's a way to do this where your head's on the floor. If you walk the elbows forward, head's on the floor. I've got a ponytail situation in my way. So you press into the elbows to take the weight off the head though. And your head does not have to be on the floor. It's just a way to do fish pose. Um, you get to choose. We just want to create this openness after that fold uh, inversion of shoulder stand. And then release it slowly. We're only there for a little while. Good. Hug the knees in. Squeeze them in. We're actually going to cross the ankles and roll forward, lift up onto a seated pose. So in my classes, I don't typically add headstand to them, especially not on video because there's so much um, room for injury there. So we're not doing headstand, but that is something you would do right before Shavasana. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna end with some finishing postures. So that is seated pose. You can go lotus pose or easy seated pose. Okay, take your hands behind your back and grab opposite wrists or elbows. And then lean forward, forehead down towards the floor. Take a few nice, long, deep breaths. And then rise back up. Release the hands, but take the backs of the wrists to the knees. Index finger and thumb connect. Other three fingers pointed down. Lift the chest, tuck the chin slightly. Eyes look down. Again, those deep breaths, meditative, solid breaths. Okay, releasing the hands, take them next to you. If you've got Lotus, it does make it a little easier. If not, that's all right. Just use the hands, press into it and feel that lift or act, lifting action. So you lean forward, hands press, lift the legs, lift the bottom, <laughs> look forward and hold. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, down. Last vinyasa. So roll on forward. If you've got lotus, you roll onto the knees, hug the elbows in, legs jump back, or stay with the regular step back, please. Up dog and downward facing dog. And that's it. We're going to rest, recover. So take the knees down and simply turn onto your back, laying down and relaxing letting go. And I know that if you end up popping off, I get it. So if you're live, uh, so that's all right. But I encourage you to take a few minutes just to lay down, relax, and I'll be here a couple of minutes and then guide, guide us out to finish the video. But close the eyes, let the feet fall open, hands rest wherever comfortable, and start to absorb, take in, and listen. Listen to the breath. Listen to the subtle sensations of the body. And this is where we practice once again, being in the here and now.
All right, let's start to take a deeper breath to reignite and re-energize. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. <sighs> Rock your head side to side. And then take a long stretch, reaching back. Lengthening a safe way to get back up is to bend the knees. Roll to your side. Little pause. Then press back up to a seated pose. And that's it. That is our Ashtanga practice, but we'll end in a yogi style of way. So we lift, lengthen in that upright posture, palms face up. Take those hands and reach up overhead, connecting all that goodness and light and drawing it to your heart, sealing in the practice. One more breath in, hands to heart center. And let it go. Thank you so much for joining me for this Ashtanga-ish yoga practice. I'll see you again soon. Namaste.